Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I sell the products I used in this project and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website and a card kit available for purchase that includes all the cardstock and embellishments and ribbon. If you decide to buy the card kit, you've got several options. You can buy the whole suite like I did. I love this suite. It's got all these samples um, with the designer series paper. You get two bundles, the painted poppies and dies and the peaceful moments and dies. Sequins, ribbon, the peaceful poppies elements. Or you might just want to get the painted poppies stamp set and the Peaceful Moments stamp set or another greeting set. And I think you're going to want the Peaceful Poppies elements, but you can get around that and I'll show you a couple of options for that. You will also need your, your ink, Poppy Parade, and Old Olive and Memento Black. But let me show you what's in the kit because there's a lot of it. I have the card base in basic black, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I'm using this piece of the Peaceful Poppies Designer Series paper. A piece of Whisper White for the inside. The envelope. I've already cut out the border for you. This label. The two flowers and two leaves. There's some glue dots dimensionals, and 36 inches of this ribbon. The main thing that I'm using from the elements is this circle you piece. You see I've already used some of them. And so let me open this pack. You get two of those circles. And so I didn't have enough for my group. So here's an alternative. Some of you may know that I share my Evernote notebook. So I went through looking for circle stamps and I found painted glass. And I think that this makes a very good uh, alternative. I don't know if you can see the circle element here. So if you decide to use painted glass, you're going to stamp that on basic black in clear embossing powder and heat set it and cut it out with a two and a fourth inch circle punch. And that will give you this piece and I think it looks just fine. I'm going to use this one for my sample for the video today. Most of my stamping is being done in the black ink today. And I'm going to start off by stamping these poppies. This is a big stamp pad and let me make sure I get that inked well. And I'm going to stamp this across the bottom of my inside piece. And I could just do it that one time, but I'm going to do it a second time. You may want to stamp this on your envelope, either down here. I think I will stamp this down here. You could also decide to stamp it on the flap. It's all about the options on this card. If you want to stamp a little bit of Poppy Parade ink with this stamp, um, that's what I did for this card. I like it very much. You could also use a Stampin' Write marker or a Stampin' Blends marker to color carefully. But I'm going to just use it black and white on the inside today. And I'll go ahead and put that on the inside of my card. And I'll go ahead and put the designer series paper on the front of the card. There are several papers from this pack that would look beautiful on this card.
And for my Stampin' Group, I have already set up my Stamparatus. All of this will be stamped with the Memento ink. I wanted to show you, by the way, this die cut actually intentionally cuts this little border on the die. I love it. So I'm going to just set my pieces in. You do get two dies with the leaf die, so you can cut those out at the same time. But you only get one stamp, so you do have to stamp that twice. And it is helpful to put a stamp case underneath just to give a little extra stability as you ink up. And your take your pick tool will do a nice job of helping you get these up. And I found my other leaf. And then I want to fairly quickly color these flowers. There is a, I'm calling it a watercolor stamp. And I am stamping kind of just around. And I don't know how dark you want your flower. Kind of up to you. But the way I'm stamping around, it's getting um, some overlap. And it gives me a variety of colors on there, which I liked most of all. If you are using the elements, you could actually use one of the pieces from that set to put on here. Um, this piece was just a strip that I cut without the die, so there's that option too. This piece, I used a little bit of that watercolor wash on the sides. And I think that highlights that um, embossed border there. On this sample, I used the dyes and only stamped one time with that watercolor wash. Very light color. I liked the darker. And I'm using these big splatters across the bottom and the smaller splatter on the leaves. And I just kind of stamped a bunch of times. And again, how much you decide to stamp is up to you. I'm bringing in that lacy piece and it is actually a little bit longer than I want it to be. So I'm going to trim off this piece. and put glue along the edge. And glue this behind. And I'm going to put adhesive in about a two inch area here. Maybe an inch down and an inch below. And I'm going to tie a little bow. This ribbon dies very well with the Stampin' Blends markers. If you wanted to have it old olive, black, basic black, or, or the Poppy Parade. But I'm leaving it white. The remaining of this is going to be loosely looped around on this adhesive. So I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers. And I'm going to try and put those ends on the adhesive so they're not totally sticking out. And then I'm looping this around so I don't have huge loops. And I'm putting, whether you're using the one from the Elements or if you're using just a plain black two and a fourth inch circle, 
or if you're using the painted glass black circle that will go on with dimensionals or you could do it flat. I'm thinking too many of these are going straight up and down so let me move some of these sideways here. There we go. And I'm putting my leaves. I'm liking one going off to the right and one going down to the left. Still want to be sure it's on the piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to put these up on dimensionals. Now this means two layers of dimensionals, so if you use both layers you may need to add a little extra postage. I'm also putting dimensionals on the back of my label. And my label is going in the bottom right corner. And my flowers guess there. And I'm putting this off the edge tucked under the bigger flower. There you go. We've got so many pieces that are kind of loose on the front of the card that um, I, it's probably a good card to show you this trick that my friend Karen said, oh I should show this on the video. I use a shoehorn, just a piece of paper, cardstock that's um, about the size of the card front. You can use cardstock, whatever you've got. And then tuck that inside and that helps all those loose pieces go into the envelope and you can take this out when you're done. Oh, I forgot that bow that I tied. As I said, I gave you a couple of glue dots. And I think you'll only need one. And I put that up in this corner. And that's it. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. And you'll find a PayPal button to order the card kit you saw in this video. Under shop, I have tips for online shopping, frequent shopping rewards, and products I offer to help you stay organized. I offer a cardstock sampler, taggers to help you identify those dies with lots of similar shapes, heavy duty bags to store 12 by 12 and 6 by 6 paper, a replacement tip for the fine tip glue pen in case yours gets clogged, and a bow maker. Share my Evernote notebook of current products for a nominal contribution. It functions as a fully searchable catalog. Inspiration takes you to all my projects. If you're new to stamping, you might want to look at the basics. You'll find how to cut card bases and layers, what's special about Stampin' Up! stamps, and some of my favorite tools. Under organization, you'll find catalog tabs, labels and case inserts, a practically free stamp pad storage solution, a basic toolkit, as well as a compact desktop toolbox, and lots of color charts. You can take a tour of my craft wall. More organization means more time for crafting. Come stamp with me here in Ventura County, California, or get the best deal of all and join my team of crafters. The team is called SIP Together, and it stands for Stamps, Ink, and Paper Together. The team is made of crafters who want to save money on the products they buy, share with a few friends, or grow a business like mine. Be sure to subscribe to my website and on YouTube. I'd love to hear your comments. Thank you for joining me. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.